Welcome to the lab demonstration on configuring a multi-chassis trunk, or MCT, on Ruckus ICX switches. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to configure MCT peers and MCT clients. I'll display different configuration options and configuration scenarios based on the available environment. I'll also view output of show commands and logs during device and link failures in MCT topologies. Here is the topology I'll be using in this demonstration. It consists of two ICX7240 switches running Layer 2 or switch code acting as MCT clients and two ICX7750 switches running Layer 3 or router code acting as MCT peers. These are the devices doing the heavy lifting for MCT. The Ruckus 04 switch will have a two-port lag configured with one link connecting to each MCT peer node. The Ruckus L5 switch will have a three-port lag configured with two links connecting to MCT1 peer and one link connecting to the MCT2 peer. From the perspective of the client switches, the connections are normal lags. The two MCT peer nodes will have two links between them, one for the inner chassis link, or ICL, and one for the KeepAlive VLAN. Finally, we have two PCs, one connected to the Ruckus L4 switch and one connected to the Ruckus L5 switch, I'll use these to verify end-to-end -end connectivity through the MCT cluster. All right, let's get started. Uh, first, I'm going to configure the client switches. The first one we're going to configure is the Ruckus 04 client switch. Uh, for this switch, we're going to use VLAN 2 as the client VLAN. Uh, this will be the one that will be tagged up to the MCT nodes, and we'll have an untagged port connecting to the PC. So let's go ahead and make that happen. So VLAN 2, we'll call it the client VLAN, and we'll tag ports 23 and 24. And then we'll untag uh, port 119. Okay, uh, we have our ports configured uh, in the correct VLAN. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create the lag uh, that bundles these ports together up to the MCT peers. Remember, from the client perspective, this is just a regular, ordinary lag, uh, dynamic DHCP lag. So let's go ahead and configure that too. So we're going to call this the uh, client for lag, and it is dynamic. And we're going to add those uh, ports 23 and 24 to the lag. OK, we're going to set the port 23 as the primary port. And then we are going to deploy the lag. And then last thing we need to do here is we need to enable the interfaces that are part of this lag. So we'll run that uh, from the uh, lag configuration context with the enable command. OK, so the ports now should be enabled. Uh, let's just verify that. So all of my other ports on the switch are disabled, so this should be a short output for us. So uh, 1123 and 1124 are enabled. They're down right now because the ports up on the uh, MCT peers are disabled. Uh, but then last thing we need to do is we need to get into that port uh, 1 slash 9 and enable it. And we'll run that show command again just to make sure all of our ports are up or uh, at least uh, uh, enabled. So we're in good shape. Port 119 is already up. Uh, it's going through spanning tree. The, the PC is already hanging off of it and ready to go for us. So, okay, we're ready to move over to the Ruckus 05 switch and get that one configured for us next. On this Ruckus 05 switch, I am just going to uh, cut and paste the configuration in for us so that you don't have to watch me type badly and uh, we'll get that taken care of real quick. So what we've done here is we've created a VLAN 2. Uh, it's also named Client VLAN. Uh, we've tagged 113, 115, and 116 as member ports. 
Uh, we've untagged port 119. This is the PC port that the uh, other PC is going to connect to. Uh, we've configured the lag, and this is the client 5 lag. It's also dynamic. Uh, we included the ports 1315 and 16 in this lag to find 115 as the primary port, and we've deployed the lag. So the lag is deployed successfully, and we're ready to go. Then lastly, we go to the uh, interfaces, and we enable all of the lag interfaces, and then we go to interface 119 and enable that interface as well. So let's just make sure that, uh, again, uh, we'll run the show interface brief command, and we'll make sure that all of these ports are at least enabled at this point. Okay, so we have our three lag ports, uh, three, five, and six. They're down, but they are enabled. And the 119 port connecting to our PC is up and forwarding. So uh, everything looks great here. We are ready to go and start configuring MCT. We'll start our MCT configuration on the MCT1 node. Uh, we're just going to configure one node completely and configure MCT, uh, get it activated, configure everything on this one node first, and then go through a couple scenarios that will show you uh, what happens when one of your MCT nodes is down. So this will be the only operational MCT node, and that will allow us to show a few scenarios of you know what occurs if the other node were to go down in normal operations, uh, some configurations that are available to you. And then next we'll, we'll go and add the second MCT node and get this full pair of MCT nodes operational, show you some of the outputs that happen when both are operational, and then we'll go through a few other failure scenarios in that case. Um, but to start this configuration, what we need to do is we need to configure our lags. Uh, we'll configure the inner chassis link or ICL lag, and then we'll configure the lags down to each of our cluster clients. So I'm going to get started on that right now. First thing we'll do is we'll configure the ICL lag. So we're configuring a static lag for the ICL. This is actually a requirement uh, for MCT. So the, the lag is going down to the client switches. They can be dynamic and run LACP, but the lag between the MCT peers that exchanges information between them uh, must be configured as a static lag. So we're configuring a static lag here uh, with an ID of 64. I prefer to use IDs in my lags. Uh, you'll see I'll use them in the client lags as well, and it helps me match the uh, lag ID with the client ID that I give it as well. So um, let's see. So we've got a, a lag here. Uh, in my lab environment, I only have one link available for the lag. Uh, so uh, I'm still going to configure a lag. This is a good idea uh, to configure a lag, even if you only have one link between your MCT peers, because then if you do have the ability to add more links between MCT peers, you can bring them up and simply add those links as port members of an existing lag and increase your bandwidth on the fly without having to undo and redo configurations. Okay, so let's go. We're going to add a, a one port to this lag, and that port is Ethernet 111. And we still have to define a primary port, and that is going to be the only port available to us. And then we have to deploy the lag. Okay, so that's our ICL lag. That one's been deployed successfully. So now we need to create our client lags. These are the lags uh, going down to the client switches. So for uh, client four, remember from this MCT node, there's only one link from this node to that lag. So again, we're going to be creating a lag, uh, but it's a single port lag. And then when MCT comes up and the peers establish their sessions, uh, they will synchronize those two single port lags and, and function as a two port lag. So let's go ahead and configure that one as well. So this is my lag. It's CC4 for cluster client floor. It's a dynamic lag because remember when I configured that client switch, uh, I configured it as dynamic. So both need to be running LACP for these uh, nodes to be able to come up and, and synchronize and uh, establish the lag. So here we go. Uh, this is a single port lag from the perspective of this switch, and we'll go ahead and configure that one port, and in this case, it's uh, Ethernet port 1124.
and we'll make that the primary port and then we'll deploy it okay so now that's our cluster client 4 uh, we also have another client client 5 that's going out to the ruckus 5 switch and that's a three port lag um, but only two of those links come to this mct1 node so i'll be configuring a two port lag here with the primary port uh, so that lag is CC5. And I give it an ID of 5, and it's dynamic. And we're adding ports 115 and 116, we'll set port 115 as the primary port, and we'll deploy it. Okay, so now we have our three lags. Our ICL lag, that's the interchassis link between the two MCT switches. We've got a lag down to the client, uh, each client, client 4 and client 5. So now we need to define the VLANs that provide connectivity. So on the client switches, we configured VLAN 2 as the client VLAN. So let's do that configuration here first. So we've got VLAN 2, it's the client VLAN, and we're going to tag all of the ports uh, that we've configured so far, the ports in the ICL link, the ports down to cluster client 4, and the ports to cluster client 5. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're adding ports 1, ports 5, port 6, and port 24. So those are all the links that we've defined as uh, ports in our in our MCT cluster. So then we'll have to create a router interface for this to provide routing for these guys. Um, so we'll put uh, interface VE2. Oh, uh, sorry, we need to define that as a router interface. Before we can get into interface VE2. Okay, now we can get into uh, interface VE2 and give an IP address. And we're going to give it 10.10.200.1 slash 24. Uh, our clients are also on this subnet. Uh, one is 10.10.200.100 and the other is 10.10.200.200. Okay, so we have IP configured on our client VLAN. Uh, we have all the port members assigned to the VLAN. So now what we need to configure is our MCT VLAN. Uh, this is the VLAN used for the MCT uh, peer nodes to exchange information between each other. So we're gonna use VLAN 150 for that. VLAN 150, we'll call it the MCT VLAN so we know what it is when we're looking at it later. And the only port that's going to be a member of this one is that ICL port. Okay, we've tagged that port. And now we need to create a router interface for this. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to use VE150. It just matches our VLAN number, so it makes it easy for us to uh, to remember what it is. So we'll jump into that interface and assign an IP address to it. And we're going to give it a 1.1.1.1 slash 24 address. Just for the purpose of this lab exercise. Okay, so we're good. We have uh, IP addresses and VLANs configured. We have an MCT VLAN, we have a client VLAN, uh, we have IP addresses assigned to each of them. So now we're actually ready to start configuring MCT. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna, we're gonna use the cluster command 
to create our uh, MCT cluster. This is going to define the cluster, and these are the things that need to uh, match between our two nodes. And then we have some other configure, configurable variable, variables that have to be unique between the nodes. So uh, let's go ahead and start with, with creating the cluster. So we're in a, the cluster is named MCT with an ID of 1. And once we're in the cluster, we need to find uh, this particular peer's RBridge ID. So the RBridge ID is a unique ID that defines this device. And we are going to give this an ID of 1. Okay, um, the RBridge ID becomes important to us. We'll show you an example of why that's important later. Okay, so we have this configured now. Uh, what we need to do now is we need to configure a session VLAN. This is the VLAN that we're going to use for the MCT peers to exchange messaging between each other um, using the cluster client protocol that allows MCT to operate the way it does. So we're going to find a session VLAN, and it's going to be the VLAN we configured earlier uh, over that uh, 111 link, VLAN 150. So session VLAN 150. Uh, so the message here says that the IP address that's configured on 150 uh, will not be advertised as a connected route to any routing protocols in the network. So that's why we can get away with using you know, something like 1.1.1.1 uh, because this, this address won't be advertised anywhere uh, outside of the network or in any protocols or be available to routing protocols at all. Okay, so now uh, we've configure that ICL lag earlier, but now in MCT, we need to say um, which port is going to do that ICL functionality. So we use the ICL command, and we're going to just call it ICL, and it's on Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 1. Okay, so we've got our ICL link. Uh, we've got a session VLAN that runs over that link. We've got our unique RBridge ID. Now we need to define the peer. We need to define who it is we're going to talk to on the other end of this link to provide MCT peer functionality with. Uh, so we're going to do that with the peer command. So what I've configured here is that the peer command, so I'm saying the, my peer is going to have an IP address of 1.1.1.2 and an RBridge ID of 2, and I'm going to reach it over the ICL named ICL, which is port 111 that has VLAN 150 running over it. So uh, when I configure peer 2, it becomes critical that when I configure its RBridge ID, and the IP address on VE150 for it, on VLAN 150, um, that these are correct. So when I configure R2, it has to be an address of 1.1.1.2 on VE150 on VLAN 50, and its R bridge ID in the cluster configuration must be 2. Okay, so now we've got our uh, our client our cluster configured our two our one MCT peer that's uh, configured to talk to another MCT peer but that's not going to make it work until we deploy it so we run the deploy command and now our now our MCT uh, cluster is deployed but we still don't have any clients configured yet so the next thing we need to do is we need to configure our MCT cluster clients within the MCT cluster config. So the first client we're going to config is our cluster client 4. So client CC4. And we have to give this device an RBridge ID. The RBridge IDs are used to identify uh, these clients uh, for the MCT peers. So again, we use the RBridge-ID command. And I like to use numbers that makes sense to me, you know, as your network grows, uh, you're going to have to really think about what IDs you're going to give these devices, but this is cluster client 4. Uh, I'm going to give it an RB, R bridge ID of 400. And we need to define the, the interface that this client is going to be uh, reachable on, which is the 1 slash 1 slash 24 interface. So we're going to do that with the client dash interface command.
client interface 1 slash 1 slash 24 and we need to just like we did with the cluster deploy the client so this client's now deployed so let's configure the other client so we give this one an arbitrage ID of 500 And this one's going to be uh, interface 115. Now, I know we have a lag that's uh, 115 and 116, but we're going to uh, set the client interface as the primary port of the lag. So the same rules apply to a lag in the client configuration as they do for normal lags. Uh, what you configure on the primary port, you also configure on the, the other members of that lag. And again, we deploy. Okay, so everything's deployed. We have the cluster deployed. We have client four deployed. We have client five deployed. Um, the only thing we need to do now is we need to go in and enable all these interfaces and see what happens when uh, we see the clients and the ports connecting to the clients are operational, as well as the port connecting across the ICL uh, to the other MCT peer, which will not come up when I enable it, uh, but we'll want it up for when we configure the other MCT peer. Okay, so we've enabled 111, which is the ICL. We configured one, we enabled 115, and by virtue of it being the primary port, 116, and 1124 that goes out to cluster client 4. So all of our ports should be up, and we should be able to start looking at some MCT information um, about our cluster. We can show our cluster status with the show cluster, the cluster ID number, peer command. So let's go ahead and look at that now. So we're cluster one. Uh, we're going to do a show cluster one peer command and take a look at what we know for our peer. Um, this gives us a lot of useful information. It confirms our R-Bridge ID, uh, the session VLAN we're running over, the state of our cluster is deployed. Um, we have a client isolation mode of loose. This will become important and I'll show you why in just a little bit here. Uh, our member VLANs is VLAN 2. The system automatically knows that VLAN 2 is a member VLAN because that's a VLAN that's configured on ports that we've added as client ports. Um, here's the information for our peer, the IP, and the uh, R-Bridge ID, and where to reach it. We see our last reason for CCP down. Uh, there is no reason for the last time it was down because we just enabled it, uh, so there is no last reason for down. Um, but the state of it right now is CCP down. So the CCP, uh, the cluster client protocol, and that port and that uh, protocol running over the ICL is down, and that's because the ICL interface is down. So we have what essentially is an MCT deployment where the second node is down. It, uh, maybe it got powered off. This is what it would look like if that switch were to, say, suddenly reset or lose power or any scenario that could bring down a switch. Um, but we still should have connectivity through the entire network from our client to client connection. So let's jump into our client and make sure we still have connectivity in this uh, quote unquote failed state that we've created here by having only one uh, MCT peer node up. So I'm going to jump in here and we're just going to run a ping. Uh, I'm in the 10.10.200.100 uh, .10 device here um, and we're going to run a ping to the 10.10.200.200 .200 device that's connected to the other cluster client switch. So we have full connectivity. Our ping is operational. Uh, we have end-to-end -end connectivity from a PC connected to the cluster client 4 switch through our one MCT node out to the other cluster client 5 switch and we have end-to-end -end connectivity so this is working perfectly as what we'd want if we were to have one of our MCT nodes fail. So I'm going to jump back into our MCT1 node and I am going to we're, we're going to we're going to configure something that uh, 
might change the way this operates and, and, and it might be something you want in your environment uh, when you're running MCT. So let, let's let's just show you what it does for us. First, I'm going to clear the log out because the system log is going to give us information about what happens uh, when we make this configuration change. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the log out so that when we jump back into it, we're only going to see the, the, the point I want to show for you. So I'm going to jump back in to the cluster and I'm going to change one configuration setting. So I'm going to configure the client-isolation strict command. Um, so remember I showed you earlier, and actually we can see it right here, the client isolation mode right now is loose. Uh, when the client isolation mode is loose, I am allowed as the only MCT node to forward data. Um, now, imagine this was a scenario where my MCT peer on the other side wasn't actually down, uh, just the cable broker got pulled out for our ICL communication. Now, neither of us would see each other, and we just saw in a loose mode that from this MCT switch, I'm still forwarding traffic between cluster clients. Um, so if both of them were actually still up and they both believed that they were the only one up, you could have some connectivity problems because of the way hashing on lags works, that each one would be trying to forward traffic uh, from one cluster client to another and potentially causing problems of reachability in your network. So if you did have a scenario like that, uh, you might want to consider running a client isolation mode strict. And here's what that does. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter here and show you what that client isolation mode strict does for us. So let's first take a look at our pings, and they've stopped. Okay, so now we've killed connectivity between our clients in our MCT cluster by just executing that one command of client isolation strict. So let's look at our log. So in our log, we see that uh, that all of these interfaces went down, therefore bringing our VE down because we know we have no active interfaces in VLAN 2, so the VE associated with that VLAN went down. Uh, so why did all of these ports go down? Well, here's what client isolation strict does. Client isolation strict says if I'm if I'm isolated from my MCT peer and I don't know what his state is, I have to assume that I should shut down all my client ports because I don't want to create a connectivity problem in the network. I would rather not forward traffic than forward traffic incorrectly. So this might be something you want to do uh, if you're in an environment like this. There's something we can do to correct this. It's called a keep alive VLAN. We will be configuring one in just a little bit. Um, but right now, we're going to keep this in, in client isolation mode strict. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to our other MCT peer. And we're going to go ahead and configure everything related to MCT on that peer. And then we're going to see what happens uh, when, they, uh, when the two peers actually see each other or can communicate with each other over that ICL link and how things change for us. So when we do that, I'm going to jump over there and make that configuration change, but I'm going to cut and paste pretty much all of the config for us so we don't have to slowly type through everything. I'll walk through each uh, portion of the configuration we do, but you, know, you won't have to wait for me to type them out. I'll just paste it. We'll show you what I did, and then we'll, we'll move on and, and see what we have here. Okay, so MCT2. Uh, we'll get in here, we'll get in the configuration mode, and let's take this first part. I'm configuring the ICL lag with an IDEA64, the port members, the primary port, and we've deployed it. So let's go ahead and deploy our first uh, client lag. So there's our CC4 lag, IDEA4, the port is 1124, it's deployed and deployed successfully. Here's our cluster client 5 lag, port 113. And now we'll configure our uh, client VLAN. So VLAN 2, uh, we put in our ICL link right here, 111, our link down to uh, our cluster client 5, and our link to cluster client 4. 
This is our VLAN 150, that's the MCT VLAN. The port is 111, this is the link that connects the two MCT peers together. Uh, we've configured the router interface for it. Uh, we did give it an IP address, which I said was very important, of 1.1.1.2, uh, because the peer is 1.1.1.1, and we want to make sure that uh, we have this accurately configured. So let's go ahead and configure our MCT. So here we go, a uh, cluster is MCT with an ID of one. It's an R bridge ID of two. We've configured the same client isolation mode that we just configured uh, over on MCT one. We want these to, to match on both sides. Uh, so they're both running an isolation mode strict. Uh, the session VLAN is also VLAN 150. Again, we get the message that lets us know that the VE on VLAN 150, the IP address configured on it, will not be advertised as a connected route by any routing protocol. And then um, we've configured, oh, I've already gone and configured a keep alive VLAN, but uh, notice I get a message here that says uh, I cannot configure a keep alive VLAN because the client isolation mode is strict. Uh, that, that's okay. Um, we are going to configure Keep Alive VLAN in a, in a moment, but we can't do it right now because we're in client isolation strict mode. So when we get to that point, I'll explain to you what a Keep Alive VLAN does for us and why it can't be enabled in this state. Uh, that was just an error in my script of what I was going to cut and paste in here for us. Uh, we define the ICL port as Ethernet 111. Uh, we define our peer. Again, that's IP address of 1.1.1.1 with an R bridge ID of one over our ICL, and we've deployed the cluster. So that's ready to go, but we still need to deploy our two clients. So I'm gonna put those both in here right now. And we've got client four with an R bridge ID of 400. That is important that that R bridge ID for the client is exactly the same as the R bridge ID for the same client on the other MCT peer. So we have a cluster client four, the R bridge ID is 400. We've configured the same on both the MCT one switch and the MCT two switch. Uh, we define our interface for that client and then we deploy it. Uh, same with cluster client five. The R bridge ID was 500. We configured the same on both, and that is required. They must be identical for this to become operational. So now the next thing we need to do, and I'm going to hold off on a second, is we need to enable all these interfaces. So we need to enable um, the 113 interface, the 1124 interface, and the 111 interface. That's the ICL. When we do that, uh, we are going to establish a communication path for the two MCT peers to actually start seeing each other now. And when that happens, uh, what we should see is we should see connectivity restored for all of our clients because they're no longer isolated. And that's what the client isolation means. They're no longer isolated from each other. So they don't have to disable interfaces and MCT can work properly by uh, forwarding traffic for whichever MCT node receives traffic from the client switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable all of these interfaces. Oh, uh, it is disabled by MCT right now. Uh, the the uh, port 111 hasn't come up fast enough and established communication, and it's disabled by MCT right now. Okay, so our CCP state is up, so our peer is up, CCP is up, the cluster communication protocol is up, so we should be able to bring up those interfaces now. Okay, so that is good. Um, let's take a look at our ping. And yes, we have connectivity again through our ping. So we're in good shape. Um, our peers are up, everything is operational. So there's a couple other commands that we can look at that tells us the state of our MCT peers. So let's take a look at that next. We look at our MCT clients with the cluster client command. So let's go ahead and look at that. So here's our clients. Um, from the perspective of this switch, uh, we have cluster client four and cluster client five, uh, both shown here. We have an R bridge ID of 400 and 500. They're both deployed. 
and the FSM state is up on MCT1. So let's go ahead and take a look at that over on our MC, uh, I'm sorry, on MCT2. So let's take a look at that on our MCT1 device. So the FSM, that's the forwarding state uh, to these two clients is up over here as well and deployed. So we have both ports of our, or both of our MCT peers able to forward traffic received from either of the cluster clients back and forth to each other independent of which port that traffic comes up on their lags so from the perspective of that pc on uh, on uh, the ruckus 4 switch it could send that traffic up either one of those links and it will still be forwarded to the pc uh, hanging off of the ruckus 5 switch so that's what mct does for you is provides these multiple paths and you know by virtue of that potentially increased bandwidth um, between these clients and then you have the failover capabilities of having one of these MCT nodes completely fail and provide connectivity although that's not true right now because we are in a cluster client isolation mode of strict and by being in that strict mode if these two peers lose connectivity to each other uh, they're both going to disable their client interfaces and assuming that they are both up they just can't talk to each other. So what we're going to do next is we're going to configure Keepalive VLAN. And with the Keepalive VLAN, we're going to provide an alternative path for the two MCT peers to talk to each other. Um, and if they can talk to each other, they know that each other is present, then they can elect one of them to be the designated forwarder for traffic on that network. So we do that from the cluster configuration mode. So on MCT1, we're already in uh, the cluster client configuration mode. We can tell by the prompt. Uh, we're in the cluster and MCT, so we're in the MCT cluster configuration. And now I'm going to just use the uh, command to disable the client isolation mode strict. So we'll do the no client isolation strict. Okay, that's good here. We'll move over to the other switch and we need to get into cluster mode. And we'll do no client isolation strict. And we're okay here now. So now, now that we've done this, uh, now you'll see we, we will be able to uh, configure a keep alive VLAN. Uh, so we're going to use VLAN 100 as a keep alive VLAN. So let's uh, exit out of here, configure VLAN 100. And we're going to tag another link I have between my switches. You can do this with a point to point link between the two MCT peers. Uh, you could do this through uh, another layer two switch. Um, there, there are a couple of different uh, reasonings why you might want to do one versus the other. We have just a direct link between the MCT1 node and the MCT2 node, and that's port 112. So we're going to use port 112 as our Keep Alive VLAN interface. So we're going to tag that port in VLAN 100. And we need to do that on both nodes. OK, so VLAN 100, we've tagged port 112. We've done that in both. Uh, so now what we need to do, um, unfortunately, when you want to, when you have a deployed MCT cluster and you want to add a keep alive VLAN, uh, we are going to have to undeploy the cluster in, a, in order to configure the keep alive VLAN. So we're going to go ahead and do that now on both of our nodes. We will run the no deploy command. And then we'll configure our keep alive VLAN with the keep dash alive dash VLAN command. And that VLAN ID is 100 as we just configured. And then we deploy our cluster again. Okay, let's do the same over here on the MCT2 node. Keep alive VLAN is 100, and we'll deploy again. 
And then on both nodes for this Keep Alive VLAN to be operational, we're going to have to actually enable that interface. Okay, interface is enabled on both nodes. Now let's take a look at our pings from PC1 to PC2. Uh, they're still operational, so our cluster is still operational uh, after being redeployed and we're in good shape. Uh, now the Keep Alive VLAN doesn't have to be up under normal operations. That's why when we deployed, connectivity was restored for our cluster uh, very quickly. But uh, you know the, the Keep Alive VLAN is really only there for the event that we have a failure of our ICL link. So let's go ahead and simulate that failure. Okay, I'm about to disable this link, and then as soon as I hit enter here, uh, we're going to jump over to our ping window and see what happens. Looks like it's still going strong. Uh, I don't see any hiccups, any problems, or any changes to connectivity. Uh, let's, you know, because I don't like that you never see this window change, I'll stop the ping and I'll restart it just to make sure. And yes, we're still, we're still pinging and active. So let's go back over to our clients and take a look at some output uh, related to or to our cluster peers and take a look at some information related to our clients. So we are on uh, switch one. We have an R-Bridge 400. We have our two clients. They're both deployed. Um, and we have master peer reachable as the FSM state. So um, well, let's take a look at how this looks over on the other peer. Show cluster one client. Now on here, our FSM state is slave. So uh, we are a slave because we have communication uh, to the peer on the opposite end. Actually, let's take a look at the show cluster one peer command. So if we look at the info here, uh, we have a keep alive VLAN peer reachable. So the peer is reachable over the keep alive VLAN. Uh, so no one has to, well, no one has to go into a client isolation mode strict. Um, the slave device basically acts like a strict node and shuts down all of its client interfaces and lets the master node, which in this case is MCT1, forward traffic for it. Now, why did MCT1 become the master? Well, that's where those R-Bridge IDs become important. The, the switch, the MCT peer with the lower R-Bridge ID becomes master and the one with the higher R-Bridge ID uh, becomes the slave and has to shut down those interfaces. So let's look at our log here and we should see those interfaces being disabled uh, as a result of this action. So um, yes, we have, uh, when this went down, the ICL interface went down, it closed the CCP session. Um, this interface, VE150, got brought down, 111 got brought down, 1124 brought down, 113 brought down, the VE's down because all the interfaces are down. Uh, so uh, we, watched as this device became a slave, it disabled all interfaces, but still allowed node one to take over and perform forwarding for the clients hanging off of the switch, as we see with the continuous pings that are accessible in our network. So this demonstration should have showed you how MCT operates. Um, you know, we have a, a scenario where these two switches act as one from the perspective of the clients connected to them, and they have different variables that can be configured for failure scenarios if one node is up, or another node is up, or if the link between the, those two nodes breaks. So with that client isolation loose mode that we saw, which is the default, uh, we saw that if we had only one node up, it still continued to forward traffic. Now that's fine if the other node is truly down, but with that loose mode and not having a keep alive VLAN, uh, each one could still be in a forwarding state. So that's where the keep alive VLAN becomes helpful because if only that ICL link breaks and the keep alive VLAN stays up, the two can communicate with each other and effectively make one of them the designated forwarder for traffic in the network and the other shuts down the client ports to prevent any, any issues from happening. We use the strict mode for when we don't have a keep alive VLAN because that way, rather than have uh, traffic 
not flowing properly, we'd rather shut off all traffic altogether to those cluster clients because that could cause more problems to other devices in the network uh, beyond just the scope of your MCT cluster. Uh, so hopefully this helped you understand uh, how MCT operates and understand how to configure MCT in your network. And I'll look forward to providing other demonstrations to you in the future. Thank you.